I had my eyes open. I shouldn't be alive. Unless it was for a reason. I'm not crazy, Pepper. I just finally know what I have to do. And I know in my heart that it's right. Today we're going to talk about my second favorite billionaire superhero. Specifically the journey that Tony Stark goes on in Iron Man. Before the events of Iron Man, Tony Stark is a pretty bad person. He doesn't love anyone for their own sake, but just for how they can make him feel or how they can pad his ego. Is it true you went 12 for 12 with last year's Maxim cover model? That is an excellent question. Yes and no, March and I had a scheduling conflict, but fortunately the Christmas cover was twins. And to top it all off, he doesn't seem to take seriously that he makes his billions constructing and selling instruments of death. You've been called the Da Vinci of our time. What do you say to that? Absolutely ridiculous. I don't paint. And what do you say to your other nickname, the Merchant of Death? That's not bad. But by the end of the movie, he's decided to turn his life around. No longer is his own self-interest the center of his universe. He devotes himself to helping other people. His life is turned around, and he becomes Iron Man. This U-turn in his life, this heart change, both literal and figurative, highlights for me the important biblical concept of repentance. The Greek word metanoia, translated repentance in our Bibles, literally means a change of the mind. Meta, change, like in metamorphosis, and noia, which comes from the word nous, a word for mind. Repentance is a very churchy word. I don't think I've ever heard it used outside of the church context, but it's a concept that we see all the time. For example, right now you could choose to switch to a different video, and technically that would be a metanoia, a change of your mind. However, the way this word was used in the ancient world and the way it is used in the Bible carries a connotation of sorrow for your actions, a turning away from them, and back toward God. This makes sense of how John the Baptist uses the word when he confronts some religious hypocrites. He says, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Meaning, their lives should produce fruit in line with the faith that they claim. A heart change, a mind change. This is why the story resonates so deeply within me as a Christian. Because Tony Stark's story is a story of repentance. And that repentance is sparked by an experience. The first step toward any life change is an experience that sparks that change. My counseling teacher used to hammer this point. She said, people change because they have an experience. One of the worst things about Tony before he became Iron Man is his contempt that he showed for human life. They say the best weapon is one you never have to fire. I respectfully disagree. I prefer the weapon you only have to fire once. Yeah, peace. I love peace. I'll be out of a job with peace. Tony is very well practiced at justifying his life to others. I guarantee you the day weapons are no longer needed to keep the peace, I'll start making bricks and beans for baby hospitals. You rehearse that much? Every night in front of the mirror before bedtime. But all of it, all of the justifications, all of the self-deceptions, they all fail him when the world treats him with the same type of contempt that he has treated the world. Tony has failed to love his neighbor as himself. And in this moment, he has an experience that will begin to rock him out of his self-deception. Now, he comes face to face with the fruit that have been born from his negligent life. In this moment, he experiences the spark of life change, the spark of repentance. And fortunately, he survives to have a life of more complete repentance. But if we just sit in this moment, it leads us to think about our own lives. Are there ways that I'm like Tony Stark at the beginning of this movie? Am I willfully ignorant? Am I negligent? Am I justifying some terrible behavior that I know I should change? Am I loving God and loving my neighbor? Or am I wrapped up in my own self-interest? Do I need to repent? Is there something in my life that needs to change? And if I repent, where should I turn? This is the Gotham City Gospel, so I'll tell you there is good news for those experiencing sorrow over their sin. That if you should turn to Jesus, you will be forgiven and changed. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us to repent away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regrets for this kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. And I hope that watching this encourages a little metanoia in your life. Thanks for taking this deep dive into one of my favorite movies, and as always, grace and peace, my friends.